afternoon guys, this is Miss Scott with a lecture today on acids and bases. By the end of this video, you should know what an acid is compared to a base, their differences, and what, how we use the pH scale to determine if something's an acid or a base. So let's get started with what is an acid exactly. So an acid, as we define it, is going to be anything that has an excess of hydrogen ions. And you would see that as H+. Now hydrogen ions don't like to exist freely in solutions. So the hydrogen ion will bond with water to form what's called hydronium, a hydronium ion, which is H3O with a plus. And here's some examples of acids you would see in a chemistry lab, HCl, H3PO4, HF. Note all of these start with hydrogen. The characteristics of an acid, they are going to taste sour, so a lot of citruses, lemons, limes, oranges, stuff like that, have acid, which gives them that particular taste. An acid will turn blue litmus paper red. So you have a piece of blue, once it's exposed to an acid, it will turn red. And it has a pH below 7. We'll talk about the pH scale here in a couple of slides. Not that big. Some examples of acids that you see every day is very common in most of the foods that we consume. So sodas, juices, vinegar, and again, like I said, lots of fruits are high in citric acid, which gives them that particular taste. So that's an acid. Now we have to compare it to a base. And a base is going to have an excess of hydroxide ions. And hydroxides are OH with a negative charge. So here's, again, some examples of bases that you would see. So sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, barium hydroxide. They all have that OH. And when you put them in a solution, they will dissociate. The OH ions will be by themselves. And this metal will be just a positive ion by itself. The characteristics of a base, they feel slippery, they taste bitter. You should not taste bases in a chemistry lab. That's very dangerous. They're kind of the opposite from acids when we're talking about litmus paper. So a base will turn red litmus paper blue. Remember, acids were the other way around. They turn blue litmus paper red. And this helps me remember blue equals base. So if it turns blue, you have a base. And it has a pH above 7. Some examples of bases that you're familiar with, a lot of cleaning supplies. Bases have this ability to cut through grime and grease and all that fun stuff when we're cleaning. So bleaches, um, glass cleaner is going to be full of bases. Now when we talk about acids and bases, we're usually talking about them in reference to the pH scale. And the pH scale measures how acidic or basic a solution is. And it's a number scale from 0 to 14. Your acids, remember acids has a pH below 7. So from 0 to 6.9, and really you could make that list go on forever, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, etc. Bases are above 7, so 7 point something, 1, 2, all the way up to 14. Something that's neutral is going to be a pH of 7. So it's neither an acid nor a base. The only thing... The only example that you would see of a neutral solution would be pure water. And if you look at the formula of water, it kind of makes sense. It's H2O, which you could rewrite as HOH. So if you got water to dissociate from itself, you would have an equal amount of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. More about the pH scale... We use it as a continuum, and we can see how acidic or basic something is compared to something else also on the scale. So you have your middle zone right here, neutral. All right, you, don't, you have the same concentration of hydroxide ions and the hydrogen ions. Below that, more acidic, that means you're going to increase the concentration of hydrogen ions. So something with a pH of 5 has more hydrogen ions 
or a higher concentration of hydrogen ions than a pH of 7. Likewise, something with a pH of 3 has even more hydrogen ions, a higher concentration than a pH of 5. The more you get to the extremes of the scale, the more acidic or basic something is said to be. So these down here, numbers like 0 and 14, these are your strong numbers. So this would be a strong acid, and this would be a strong base. Towards the middle, the closer you are to neutral, the weaker you are. So something with a pH of 5 or 6 is said to be a weak acid, whereas something with a pH of 8 or 9 is said to be a weak base. And the last thing we'll need to know for acid -base acids and bases are the acid-base neutralization reactions. And we've already seen these. It's just a specific kind of double replacement reaction that happens when you mix an acid and a base together. And an acid and a base will always produce water and salt. And salt is not necessarily NaCl, which is table salt. Salt just means an ionic compound. So here we have HCl, hydrochloric acid, and sodium hydroxide. These ions that make it an acid and a base respectively will switch places and form water. So what's left over, Cl, chlorine, that's a negative ion, and sodium is a positive ion, they will form an ionic bond and make a salt. In this case, it is table salt. What you should know, the big idea here, is the resulting pH that you get in this side will be more neutral than your initial acids and bases, either one. So if this were, say, a pH of 1, and this were, say, a pH of 13, you would get something not quite as acidic or basic here. It might be still slightly basic or slightly acidic, but it will be closer to neutral.